What's good YouTube? Today's video is going to be a marksmanship hunter guide for Dragonflight. We're going to cover everything for the MM Hunter in this video, from talents to rotations, stat priority. We'll also be going over tier sets for the marksmanship hunter, gems, enchants, macros as well, and also just my overall thoughts on this spec. I do just want to remind you guys to subscribe if you haven't already, and like the video if this guide does help you out. But let's get on with the video. Okay, so to kick things off then, we'll start with the M Plus build. I won't go over every single talent, but I will be going over the main ones for you guys so we're going to start up on the right with the kill shot obviously kill shot is going to be massive for marksmanship hunter and you will see why further down the line and then we're further just going to buff up this kill shot damage by 25 percent whenever it crits post haste is very nice for mm hunters just to get that extra bit of mobility as well so we're going to be taking two points in that and also two points in natural mending we need all the help we can when it comes to surviving as a hunter so at any point we can we are going to be taking defensives speaking of defensives we're obviously going to take survival of the fittest but we're further going to buff that up with nature's endurance this is going to further reduce the damage we take by an additional 20 percent making it a total of 40 percent whenever we use survival of the fittest it is on a 2.4 minute cooldown which is very long and also only lasts six seconds so blizzard please help us out defensives are a massive weak point for hunters and we could really use some buffs to that part of our kit for mythic plus we are going to want to take counter shot 24 second kick along with other range kicks but in a mythic plus scenario we're going to want to keep this on cooldown as much as we can unless we're obviously saving it for a priority kick down the left side here, we're going to take Tar Trap if our tank or group ever needs to kite. This is just going to be a nice ability to be able to do that. And then another piece of utility that the Hunter brings is Tranquilizing Shot. Just being able to soothe any mob or also remove a magic effect from an enemy is quite a nice piece of utility that the Hunter actually brings. We're then going to come down the middle and take Misdirect, which is actually going to be pretty massive for MM Hunters. The upfront burst we have is actually insane. So as long as you pop this before the pool, I don't think your tank will be having any aggro problems. Another main ability we're going to be taking is obviously binding shot this has changed going into dragonflight so that now if they move more than five yards from the arrow they are going to get stunned for three seconds again just a nice piece of kiting utility for the hunter to bring and it's only on a 45 second cooldown as well so if your tank does need to kite for whatever reason or your group for that matter just whack one of these down and you're going to have a good few seconds to get away from the mob that coupled with tar trap is a very strong combination for any kiting that you need to do so don't be hesitant to whack these down we're going to take camouflage next, which is going to allow us to do any skips that we need to do. But also out of combat, it will allow us to heal for 2% of our max health every one second. I've mentioned how squishy we are as hunters as well. So we're going to take hunters avoidance to reduce any damage we take from AoE effects by 6%. We're then going to go down into the damage part of our class talent tree. We're going to take 4% increased crit chance from keen eyesight. And this is going to pair nicely with master marksman, which is going to cause the target to bleed for 15% additional damage of the damage we've dealt over the next 6 seconds. We're then going to bang 1 point in serrated shots, which is just going to amp up our serpent sting damage and also our master marksman damage and this is going to further be increased when the target's below 30 percent health arctic bowler is kind of a non-talent it is going to do some passive damage but the main reason we're going to be taking this talent is to get explosive shot down here explosive shot is going to be one of your top damaging abilities by the end of any key especially with the talent salvo but we'll get into that later on this ability really does pump it's only on a 30 second cooldown and it is just massive aoe damage especially with the buffs it's had recently to further increase that damage we're also going to take death chakram which is going to cause any enemy that is struck by the death chakram to take 10 percent more damage and also generate us some focus as well and then over here we're going to take serpent sting as well as the poison injection which is just going to add some extra passive damage through applying the serpent stings passively and then also consuming these latent poison stacks whenever we aim shot for just that extra bit of damage next we're going to come over into the actual spec tree itself but obviously going to take aim shot and rapid fire here make sure you take lone wolf as well that extra extra 10% damage whenever you don't have a pet out is actually massive and then the key part of your rotation as well is also going to come from precise shots whenever you aim shot it causes your next one to two arcane shots or multi shots to deal 75% more damage so unless you're in a true shot window you never really want to munch these procs you want to fire these off in between every aim shot so that you're not over capping on these stacks we're then just going to take extra crit chance from hunter's knowledge and then another great talent is careful aim which is going to cause our aim shot to deal 50% bonus damage to targets who are above 70% health. This talent is a huge contributor into why we are such a bursty spec, especially straight off the rip. Those aim shots above 70% health definitely be slapping. Streamline is another huge talent, which I'm pretty sure is new going into Dragonflight, but it's going to increase rapid fire's damage by 15% and also cause our next aim shot to cast 30% faster. We're then further going to buff up our rapid fire by taking surging shots, which is going to increase the damage it deals by 
percent and then also give our aim shot a 15 percent chance to reset the cooldown of rapid fire as well we're then going to take death blow which is actually a pretty integral part of our rotation now giving us a chance whenever we aim shot or rapid fire to grant a charge of kill shot but also allow us to use it on any target regardless of their health this is going to tie in very nicely especially with razor fragments whenever our trick shots fades or we gain a stack of death blow our next kill shot is going to deal 50 percent increased damage and then also kill shot five extra targets for 25 percent of the damage over six seconds if these two abilities proc at the right time this is some insane burst especially in your true shot windows even at 370 item level i've seen my kill shots hitting for like 110k which is just ridiculous for an instant cast ability and then also it's obviously going to do 25 percent of that damage to targets around it we're then going to want to take double tap which for the majority of the time you're going to want to pair up with your rapid fire just doubling up the shots that you're actually firing off this again is a very nice cooldown for that extra bit of burst and you can see how our burst is really stacking up now speaking of more burst volley is also massive for this not only does it deal some nice aoe damage but it also allows us in our true shot window to fire off a rapid fire and two aim shots without having to cast multi-shot in between which again just makes up for some incredible burst in such a short space of time as well multi-shot and trick shots are obviously main components of this build too with trick shots whenever our multi-shot hits three or more targets our next aim shot or rapid fire is going to ricochet and hit up to five additional targets for 55 percent of the damage this is the foundation of this build and our aoe as a marksmanship hunter it is very annoying that this doesn't proc on two targets don't get me wrong but anything above that we are just going to be slamming those six targets in total i do just want to quickly mention now the new talents we've got heavy ammo and light ammo so you can actually pick these talents depending on what type of dungeon you are running in a very mob dense dungeon like algathar's academy for example i may run light ammo just being able to hit those eight targets in total is going to be huge for a dungeon like that where you're constantly pulling big and being able to actually hit all of the mobs as well i can't really see a scenario in mythic plus just yet where you would actually be going for heavy ammo if you consistently have four targets then this talent becomes viable but for now i would recommend avoiding this talent choice node unless obviously Obviously, like I said, it's a dungeon like Algathar's Academy where you could take light ammo instead. Next, we're going to come over to Serpent Stalker's Trickery. This is obviously the legendary from Shadowlands, which is just going to passively apply Serpent Stings whenever we aim shot. Unfortunately, this does not work with the Trick Shots buff, so it is only going to apply to your primary target. However, if you do want to just passively get out more Serpent Stings, then you could always take Hydra's Bite over here. And every time you aim shot, it's going to fire out three Serpent Stings and also increase the damage a bit as well. A personal favorite of mine is lock and load i really like this talent it just adds a bit of variance to the gameplay and if it procs at the right time you can do some ridiculous bursts especially if you're lucky enough for it to proc pretty much on pull bullseye we're going to whack one point in which is just going to increase our crit chance when the target is below 20 percent health obviously we're going to take true shot our main cooldown is a marksmanship hunter we're then further just going to buff up our true shot with eagle talents true focus making it last three seconds longer and reducing the focus cost of most of our abilities and then finally with this talent choice node here you can either choose between a shorter true shot or a more powerful true shot that stays on its two minute cooldown for now we're going to stick with unerring vision just increasing our crit strike chance but also the crit damage dealt and this will stack up to 10 times finally we're going to buff up our multi-shot damage through bullet storm which is actually a really nice new talent for the spec just buffing our sustained damage and making multi-shot actually do some considerable damage now and then a massive talent we've had coming into dragonfly is obviously the new talent salvo every 45 seconds whenever we multi-shot or volley it's going to apply an explosive shot up to two targets which when coupled with a third explosive shot from the talent over here makes for some absurd burst and will send you straight to the top of the meters so that is going to be my mythic plus build for now obviously like i've mentioned there are a few changes that you could actually make mainly being through this talent choice node here and then also dependent on the key i would also consider taking wailing arrow i would wouldn't really take this talent for the damage i would just take it more for the cc as the aoe silence can be pretty huge for example i'm mainly thinking of algathar's academy here any dungeon with a lot of casts in wailing arrow could definitely be a viable pick so next we're going to move on to the raiding build now obviously this is going to be more single target oriented so the only real big difference in the class talent tree is that we're going to take one point out of arctic bowler and then we're going to put that in serrated shots and then also take steel trap obviously this got a little nerf recently but on single target it's 
still is king. It's not amazing by any means, but it is a single target damage increase. So we're going to be taking Steel Trap there. And other than that, not too much has changed in the class talent tree. Over in the marksmanship tree, though, we're going to be taking Improved Steady Shot. So this is just going to generate us 10 focus like we've been used to with Steady Shot before. But now, obviously, you have to take the talent for it. So we're definitely going to be taking that. We're going to be sticking with the Surging Shots and also Double Tap over here, along with Death Blow and also Razor Fragments. We are going to be taking Volley. However, if you would like to, you could take one point out of here and bang this in Steady Focus instead, as long as you're keeping pretty much 100% uptime on this buff. The Haste buff is nice, especially for single target. However, it's not too much of a gain. Again, we're going to come down and take True Shot, Eagle Talons, True Focus, and also Unearing Vision. Lock and load for those instant aim shots. And then this is where the real differences come in. We're going to put an extra point in Bullseye for those huge execute windows. And then these are the talents that I haven't played with yet, and I'm definitely excited to play with them. But it's just basically extra passive damage when you aim shot through these wind arrows that you're going to be firing off as well. And then also Windrunner's Guidance is just going to give you a 3% chance to grant you 10 seconds of true shot whenever you fire a wind arrow. So these are going to be the main differences for a single target or a raid scenario. Again, like I said, you can put a point in steady focus if you want and drop volley. But the main selling point of the Marksmanship Hunter in a single target scenario is our insane execute. With talents like Bullseye, you're going to be taking kill shot, obviously, improved kill shot to further increase that damage. And then also talents like Death Blow and Razor Fragments. Your kill shot ability becomes an absolute monster. And when they hit that 20% phase, you'll see yourself climbing those meters in no time. So in a Mythic Plus scenario, let's have a look at the AoE rotation for the opener. You're going to start off with a double tap. You're then going to throw your Death Chakram out to get the 10% increased dam, followed by an explosive shot. You're then going to use True Shot and drop a volley on the targeted area. And then this is where the burst really begins. You're going to fire off a rapid fire with your double tap buff, followed by two aim shots back to back in your volley window. So you won't be having to press multi shot in between these casts. And that is what's going to be doing the insane burst that we've been seeing from the Marksmanship Hunter. Obviously, I would highly recommend using Misdirect before this. Otherwise, all the mobs are just going to turn look at you and run at you. So you definitely want to be pressing misdirect before you do this burst. And then the only variance that comes in with this opener is if you get a kill shot proc, use that straight away. It's just going to bump up that burst even more along with also your lock and load procs for your aim shot. Other than that, in AoE, it's pretty much just a priority system. So you want to use kill shot when available to spend your pouch of razor fragments procs. You then want to use explosive shot on cooldown. Use double tap when your rapid fire is coming off cooldown so that you can pair it up nicely with rapid fire and then again it's just about keeping all your cooldowns pretty much on cooldown so that goes for death chakram volley obviously your rapid fire make sure that in an aoe situation you are using your multi shot to gain your trick shots buff before you use your rapid fire or aim shot and then outside of your true shot windows you want to be spending all of your precise shot stacks first before you aim shot again so that you're not munching any of these procs for a little bit of extra min maxing you can tab target with your aim shot to just apply that passive serpent sting because remember it's only going to be applying to your primary target that you're aim shotting so just try and cycle through the mobs whenever you're using aim shot and then when you have nothing else to press just use steady shot purely as a filler ability with the mythic plus build it's not going to be giving you any focus it is purely just there for a filler so it's pretty similar rotation for single target. Obviously, you're not going to be using multi-shot in between aim shots or rapid fires. You want to use double tap before the pull. If you are using the steady focus talent, then you want to use steady shot when there's roughly just below two seconds left on the pull timer. You then want to fire off your death chakram to get that 10% increased dam. Then you could throw down your steel trap at your target's feet. At this point, we're going to fire off our volley if you are actually using that talent. Obviously, we're not going to be using that if we're using Steady Focus. You then want to send your True Shot into one Rapid Fire with the Double Tap buff, into two back-to-back -back Aim Shots, and then from there, the priority system follows. So again, as previously mentioned for the AoE rotation, you're going to want to use Kill Shot when available, pair up your Double Tap with your Rapid Fires. Then again, it's just about sending those cooldowns pretty much on cooldown as well through Steel Trap, Death Chakram, Volley, True Shot as well. Obviously, you want to try and pair these cooldowns up as much as you can. Use aim shot if it's on two charges, then send rapid fire on cooldown. And again, outside of your true shot windows, you want to be using those precise shot buffs before you use 
aim shot again just to get that extra damage on your arcane shots and you don't want to munch any of these procs by using aim shot before you've consumed all of these buffs. As far as steady shot goes with the steady focus talent you just want to maintain the buff as much as you can and refresh it when it drops below five seconds. Also if you're casting steady shot as a filler just use another one to refresh the buff but don't bother with this buff during your true shot window. You literally just want to be sending as much aim shots and rapid fires in your true shot window as you possibly can. As far as stats go please Please ignore my stats, it is only week 2 of Dragonflight, so I've just been going for eye level on my gear as for now, but the general stat priority for MM Hunter is Mastery on top, followed by Crit and Versatility. Mastery is pretty much always our best stat, with Crit just a little bit behind, but obviously I do just want to advise you to sim your character, as your stat weights will be different to mine and the next person's. For example, Mastery is probably very high on my list, but you might have enough to the point where it's not that much of a big deal anymore, but yeah, basically Basically, you just want to be going for mastery and crit. Haste isn't as valuable, it becomes more valuable in a single target setting, for instance in raid, however it is generally inferior to these other stats, so don't try and stack too much of it. So then, as far as tier sets go for the marksmanship hunter, here we are. I did just try and log on to the beta for this, but there's no servers up, so I'm going to have to do this through Icy Veins, I'm afraid. But basically, the two piece for the marksmanship hunter causes arcane shot and multi shot critical strikes to make your next aim shot bleed for 40% additional damage over 6 seconds. This is going to tie in very nicely with talents like Serrated Shots, increasing the bleed damage by 20% and also further increasing this when the target is below 30% health. So this is actually a very nice 2 piece set for the Marksmanship Hunter and then this is just going to further be buffed up by the 4 piece which is going to give us a 15% chance from our auto attacks to make our next arcane shot or multi shot guaranteed to crit, forcing our 2 piece to proc which is again going to make our aim shot make the target bleed for an additional 40% of the damage over 6 seconds. So it's a nice tier set for the marksmanship hunter, nothing too crazy but it is just going to be some nice passive damage to add on top and like I said it does have some nice synergies with the talent serrated shots. As far as gems and enchants go for the MM hunter we're going to start off with one skillful illimited diamond which is just going to give us primary stat and also mastery but remember you can only use this once. They will be expensive so make sure you use this on an item that you are unlikely to replace and then in any other sockets that you do get you're going to want to use the Sensize Neltherite which again is just going to give mastery and and crit this time are two main stats that we definitely want to go for at all times. Enchants for the MM Hunter on the neck piece you're going to want to use the tiered medallion setting. This adds up to three sockets to a neck item so you can bang three of these in there or two of these and one if you don't already have one of these. For the weapon you're going to want to use the high intensity thermal scanner which is going to increase our secondary stat depending on the rank of this enchant by around 1.7k dependent upon the type of creature that we are attacking. For the cloak we're going to want to go with graceful of avoidance. Anytime that we can reduce the incoming damage as a marksmanship hunter we're going to want to take it. Chest we're going to go with waking stats increasing our primary stats so that'll be agility for us. Again avoidance on the braces. We're going to go with a fierce armor kit on the legs which is just going to increase our stamina but also our agility as well. Boots you could either go for speed from plane runners breeze or you could also go for watchers loam as well which is going to increase our stamina by 74. Like I said I feel that anytime we can go with a defensive option for the hunter in general you're going to want to take it so in my personal opinion I might go with the Watcher's Loam. And then Furring Enchants obviously sim your character but by default you're probably going to go with Devotion of Mastery. Obviously Devotion of Critical Strike could work for you as well. Our best DPS flask is going to be the Iced Vial of Corrupting Rage. However, with the survivability struggles that we already face, like I keep harping on about, this could end up pretty detrimental to the Hunter class in specific. So as alternatives, you could go with Tepid Versatility for single target scenarios and then also Glacial Fury for AoE, like in a Mythic Plus setting. I will just note that Tepid Versatility obviously with increasing your verse you're going to take slightly less damage as well so that is always a nice thing to know though I wouldn't get too hung up on it because it's not going to make that much of an impact. As far as potions go you should use the elemental potion of ultimate power if you can't afford these then just use the elemental potion of power but it's just going to increase your primary stat for 30 seconds however this is on a five minute cooldown so use this sparingly for bosses or really hard pulls depending on what type of content you're facing and then for food you're going to want to use the feast if you can afford it or somebody in your group can afford it 
if not use the fated fortune cookie for the extra agility and other than that the thousand bone tongue slicer is going to increase your crit and mastery so that is always a safe pick as well so as far as macros go for the marksmanship hunter all these macros will be linked in a paste bin in the description if you want to copy them and use them for yourself but for all hunter specs i would recommend using a misdirection macro and it will go as follows slash cast you put the name of your tank in here whoever it is you want to redirect the aggro onto you can click on their nameplate right click and then come down to the copy character name down here and then just paste that in over here and then whenever i use misdirect it's just going to cast it on this person here if i was to be in a party with them there's not many other macros that i would recommend for the marksmanship hunter a lot of them would just be cursor macros so you do slash cast at cursor this allows me to pre-place my cursor and it will fire whatever ability it is at the targeted area where my cursor already is so i don't have that big green circle and i don't have to make an extra button press so if i wanted to binding shot over here i would just pre-place my cursor here and then press the keybind and it will fire it instantly where my cursor already happens to be. In Mythic Plus, I tend to put my kick target on my focus, so I use at focus macros for abilities like counter shot. This just means I don't have to tab target or click around to kick the mob that I actually want to kick when I want to be focusing down another mob with big damn. And then as far as my true shot macro goes, I just bind it in with my racial ability because I'm an orc, I can use blood fury and then also my trinket. Depending on where your on use trinket would be, either put use 13 or 14 in here so for instance mine is on 14 now so i put use 14 and whenever i use true shot it's also going to cast blood fury and my trinket at the same time there you go and there's blood fury as well so as far as my overall thoughts go for the marksmanship hunter i think after the chain of buffs that we've had recently we're actually in a pretty good spot going into the start of season one our upfront burst is pretty unmatched i can't think of any spec that can do that straight off the rip and obviously we can redirect all that threat with misdirect so our tank should have no problem gathering up the mobs our single target actually isn't too bad either we are just a very bursty spec so all our damage is pretty much front loaded which is actually very nice for mythic plus but unfortunately when it does get to those higher keys or harder content in general for example mythic raids where the mobs start living longer and the burst actually does start to fall off i think marksman probably will lose out to bm in the long run especially once we get the bow but i do think it is definitely a viable and strong choice for now in these first weeks of mythic plus it's going to be doing some insane overall damage and actually bring some nice utility as well but yeah we will have to see how we hold up in those higher keys if you like this video or this guide helped you, please feel free to drop a like down below and also subscribe to your boy. And until next time, I'll catch you later.